Welcome to Alpha Wolf Capital. I'm Tim, and I want to personally thank you for stopping by. Between the OTC, New York Stock Exchange, and NASDAQ, there are over 22,000 companies traded publicly. I feel that small businesses are the backbone of America. This channel is designed to help small companies, both public and private, gain exposure with potential consumers, investors, even partners. Take, for example, today's guest. Trent Northcutt with Aurora Spine. Aurora Spine is on a mission to be the leader in advanced minimally invasive technologies which will positively impact lives worldwide. Their philosophy is to make implants that match the patient's anatomy, not make their anatomy fit their implants. But I'll let Trent tell you more about that in just a moment. It's important to understand that I do not collect compensation for the interviews I do here. The purpose of this channel is to find companies that have identified big problems and have found solutions to those problems. There's a thing called impact investing. It's, it's tied to environmental, social, and governance. There are amazing companies out there addressing real problems. And unfortunately, no one knows about those companies because they're too small. I am asking you to listen to these interviews and fully comprehend what it is that they are trying to accomplish. And if it resonates with you, help the company spread the word. Help them as a potential investor or a brand ambassador. The goal here is to solve problems that humanity has and have a positive impact on humanity. You can either choose to be part of that goal or you can choose to take no action. It's entirely up to you. But that is the purpose of this channel. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. I am not a financial advisor. I recommend highly that before buying any security, you speak to a financial advisor and do your own due diligence. Hey everybody, Tim from Alpha Wolf Capital coming at you with a follow-up interview to a very exciting story. The share price not, may not be uh, indicating that it's a very exciting story at the moment, and, and that's okay. What I'm more uh, interested in is you know what's happening with the company and what uh, what is what is the CEO and founder of the company excited about uh, over the over what's coming up uh, Trent Northcutt from Aurora Spine which uh, if you're not familiar with the company you can go back and, and watch the interview that it, that we did it was very detailed about everything that they have going on there. But uh, to just sum it up, this is a best in class, innovative, better quality of life company for people that have spinal spinal issues, right? Would you agree with that, Trent? That's right, Tim, that's right. So I wanna thank you, man, for, I know you're busy as hell because you've got other projects going on, but, uh, <laughs> Why don't you give us a, just a little update on, on what's happening with Aurora? Well, no problem. First of all, Tim, thank you for having us back on the on the on the broadcast. Uh, we were thrilled to do it the first time. Uh, we're just as excited to do it again this time, and and we're going to do it again because we we we're, we're we we love talking with you, and and this is this is where the grassroots um, you know starts and how you build the story is that you got to. You know, you gotta you gotta talk with everyone and let get some information out there and try to get the shareholders to understand why at Aurora we still remain so excited about what we're doing and they should be excited too. So yeah, I'll, I'll talk about a few things. Uh, the the main three the main three products projects that have always been part of the company are continuously uh, bearing fruit for the company. Uh, we we doubled sales uh, on the Zip Fifty One which is you know, our real premier product uh, for L5-S1 Fusion, that low back option for L5-S1. Of course, the Zip LP continues to run strong. Um, we, we run this, both these products um, uh, on a lot of different social media platforms to get attention 
the all the you know the young thirty year old uh, uh, surgeons that are now coming into practice, joining practices, uh, all the young thirty year old interventional doctors that are now uh, joining big established uh, interventional practices. And what we're doing is we're we're still running our maintaining quarterly quarterly labs, teaching uh, the doctors how to use these products and how they benefit it. And the Zip uh, fifty one, like I said, is doubled from last year to uh, through this year. And we continue to see how we think Zip fifty one will actually be a, a continued um, uh, uh, go, uh, growth product for us. It um, it's one of the uh, one of the only few products that. Um, fits onto the L5S1 segment. It was designed for that purpose. It has low angled spikes here that dig down onto the sacrum and attaches to your L5 vertebra and then S1, which is sacrum. So low, low back, as low as you can get onto the spine. Uh, it's a small incision, about four centimeters. And this implant goes in, uh, you, you grip it, you zip it, you lock this implant down. The patient comes into the surgery center in pain walks out with, with instant relief uh, and can go home and, uh, and get right back on their feet. They're walking the same day, of course. Uh, and this continues to be a big focus for Aurora and how we got involved uh, in that with, uh, with teaching uh, all the different doctors these techniques. Uh, these courses still, uh, sorry, I hit the wrong one here. The, uh, one more, sorry. There it is. So we continue to teach uh, this product, the Zip uh, LP and the Zip 51, um, this is what usually gains their attention when we're first talking about, you know, who wants to come into this conference, who wants to uh, look at what products are being um, uh, displayed at this lab. We've had unbelievable faculty. These rooms have been uh, filled uh, with people taking copious notes on how do they get uh, reimbursed. This is Dr. Stephen Falowski, a neurosurgeon out of Pennsylvania. This is Dr. Rasso. He's a he's a pain doctor out of uh, Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, uh, actually, maybe Miami, Florida. Um, and uh, you know, Dr. Bolgo here from Las Vegas. Um, you know, people coming together. Uh, as you look in the background here, you see that we're always talking about Dexa. We're always talking about these things. We're teaching this entire group about Zip benefits of Zip benefits of Zip fifty one. And of course, while we've got them here, we're going to talk to them about what are you preferring your SI? What are you using currently? What can we do to talk to you about uh, our other offerings, such as uh, the silo and the silo TFX, which is really, really exciting. And prefacing with them that, hey, if you can put in a ZIP51 implant right here and you could use us for SI joint, how many orthopedic doctors do you have coming into your surgery center? And would they be interested in taking a look at DEXA? You as an owner of a surgery center, doctor, you know, one, two, or three, can we have access to the ortho neurosurgeons that you're talking to? So there's a couple ortho neuro doctors in different pictures here uh, that are, they're also taking a look at our zip devices as a, you know, as a, as a war to see if it's something that might fit their practice and also gives us a, a connection with them where they can say, all right, yeah, I see what you guys are doing lab wise. I see what you guys are doing education wise. I see how you're adding faculty to everything. You are participating in multi-center studies. Uh, and the ZIP study continues to be uh, an outstanding device. The ZIP uh, multi-center study is, uh, we're about to release, uh, it's all, you know, it's been closed now for a while. We're now just collecting data. Uh, we've got accepted published paper on it. We've had posters published on it at uh, uh, ortho conferences and neuro and pain conferences. Uh, uh, we got Dove Press accepted the, 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 the publication. So we're going to show that uh, nearly almost 70% of patients who come in uh, that or who this is an alternative to pedicle screws, uh, walk in uh, uh, and walk out using the zip device uh, with full recovery and feeling fantastic about their recovery. Um, and we, you know, we're, we're thrilled on that. And, and here, let me show you some of the, the technique. This is a zip uh, LP going in, but we make a very small incision, as I mentioned. It allows the doctor to get access. Now, a lot of these pain interventional doctors are learning from the ortho neuro. They're, they now understand that they've got to make a skin incision, get through get through the, uh, the, the fatty part of the tissue and the muscle, and then delicately get through here where the ligament is right here. This is the bumps on your back. This would be a patient laying in, laying in prone position. Got it. There's a muscle right here that you got to get, and you just got to gently move it aside. 
And they move this, they use this instrument by just twisting their wrist to get it into place to move the muscle away from the bone. So this is your low back, this is your lumbar spine. Then we take the ligament out of the, of the spinous process here, right in between there, and get exposure to this section right here. And this area right here is where the barrel size fits. This is how we measure the different size barrels that the zip device offers, which is 10, 12, 14 millimeter diameters. The doctor then uh, fills in the, uh, the implant with biologics, which is DBM, demineralized bone matrix. Bone is fusion, so you want to put as much bone into the patient as possible. It also is part of the requirements of billing out this procedure. You get a left side, you get a right side. Purple side always goes on the left. Again, you grip it, you zip it, you soak the patient's back, and you send them home. So this is a real great screwless approach to lumbar fusion. Not every patient should need a zip device, but not every patient needs screws. So this is why it's nice to have these options uh, for patients, primarily number one. And for Aurora, this is why we have both. We have the zip devices and why we have this new uh, hydro system that we're going to talk about more in the show. So that's a quick uh, snapshot of what we've done with zip. And as I mentioned, while we're sitting there talking with them, we're bringing up two other products uh, which is the in the training session, which is, you know, the silo allograph system and the silo TFX system. And I'll I'll share more about that. But unless there's another question you want to start off with, Tim. No, I, I mean, I got to tell you now, I, I love doing I love doing the interview with you because the graphics that you provide are just fantastic. I, I've told you this before. I mean, thank you. you. Whoever's doing all of your stuff is just they do they do amazing work it's all done in house we uh, we have uh, we don't we don't outsource any of it it's all done in house um rodolfo does our as our animations tanis does our uh, uh graphics and um uh, and and works on all the literature and brochures and he gets really good collaboration from the sales team the sales team puts in a lot of input on it they you know they say what they like what they don't like and it's a, it's a real team effort for sure Oh, I mean, and it, you can tell it. You can you can see it, right? I mean, a lot of a lot of companies could learn a lot lot from what you, you do. You'd be a great case study. And, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so you're you're gaining traction, and when you've got their attention, I I know that uh, the Dexa. I mean, the, there's people that are that maybe aren't as uh, happy with. The progression there. This it's it's a this is yeah a one of them process. Yeah, I'm one of them. I I, I want to have uh, some faster growth uh, in 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 the uh, Dexa, but and let me let me come back to Dexa because I just want to finish up on this on this silo. So the silo um, continue. This is like I said is I was telling you earlier that this was a product that we had started with. We got started with the allograph space for SI, and we did it for a couple reasons. One. We wanted to learn the market. Two, uh, we wanted to be able to create revenues for the company. Um, and what happened in those two uh, scenarios was we learned a lot, and we actually started creating revenues for the company, and it helped us prepare ourselves for the um, uh, silo TFX, which was always our you know big master plan behind the scenes was to create a robust um, a crossover product, which is the silo TFX. And what happened during the stages is that, as some of you will know from the calls before, that the allograph market dropped out. Like it really just sunk because there was coding reimbursement. In fact, they split the codes. There was a 2279 reimbursement code for all SI fusions. And with allograph, it got spun out into a 2278 reimbursement code. Slightly lower uh, uh, reimbursement for the doctor, slightly lower professional fees. And we thought that maybe its, it's heyday it was over. But it's actually, we're seeing a resurgence uh, in the allograph. Um, you know, we've seen it about, you know, call it 10 to 11% of our monthly number where it has dropped down, it had dropped down to almost zero, uh, where at one point in time is the fastest new product in the portfolio while we were developing TFX. Now, TFX is the fastest growing product, and that continues to be a fast growing product, you know, exceeding 100 implants a month. Um, the, but the silo allograph system, which has now got a second wind. Uh, and we're pleased with it. And we have lots of inventory. We've got lots of people that are still interested in it. It's also a crossover product that people can use between ortho, neuro, and pain. Um, and, you know, patients get great relief. They also walk into the surgery center and with a lot of pain. 
And, uh, you know, a procedure that takes less than an hour, gets them right back. They walk out. They feel terrific. Well, and, and it took us to that, that second phase, which was what were, what were we going to do next? Say so allograft technique is exactly the same as a silo TFX. But the nice thing about the, TF, the TFX is that the TFX system offers, um, stays on the 2279 reimbursement code versus the 2278 code. So it's two different codes now. Um, we were designing this implant without the purposes of coding reimbursement because there was only one code at that time. We were trying to make the most robust implant with the best biomechanics based upon a patent that was licensed to Aurora. We wanted to make the best product that we could get into market. And we believe that we brought the slickest, most um, you know, easiest, minimally invasive approach to SI. So you create your joint finder, you get into the joint, you got your guide wire in there. Now a couple taps on the mallet. The patient's usually awake, laying in prone position. Now the ghost tube, which we patented the ghost tube, allows you to get placement. And then you can see visually all around the patient's landscape, right? Their bone structures without being uh, blocked from the metal views because metal can, can scatter on an x-ray image and block your views. There's no power. So we don't use any you know high power drills or anything. That's all just twist, twist, twist. Um, Many of the, in fact, the largest SI company in the world, they have to use power. They have to use big drills and big machines to put in the, the implant. This is all done manually uh, with a lot of thoughtfulness, a lot of easygoing approaches. Again, biologic, there's always a theme with biologics with Aurora. You'll, you'll find that all the time. And now you tap, tap, tap this implant place. It's secured into the joint. And I could probably put this implant by itself and it would it would be done just like the allograft does. But in this case, we built in these uh, uh, really uh, great fixation devices, one made for the ilium, so one made for the sacrum. So you start with your sacrum, green means go, get your green screw in, make sure it, it, it fits nicely and snugly into the sacrum. These uh, drivers are flexible. They're made in Switzerland. They cross over. It's one of the few instruments that we have actually made overseas. And they cross over into the chamber and now allows the screws to, to go in opposite directions of each other, giving that double-sided fixation, one in the sacrum, one into the ilium. And now this is what stops. You've got complete transfixion uh, fixation going on right here with this cone. And you've got belt and suspenders with these screws going into your, uh, into your uh, sacrum and gold going into your, uh, your ilium. Gold means you're done. You've won the race. You've now done this procedure all in less than an hour, and you've got this really nice, robust uh, fixation, all minimally invasive. We've actually seen uh, multiple cases now where the patients feel so good, uh, and you're going to love this x-ray. Make sure I had it here. Um, they get such great relief that not only have we done bilaterally, where we've done both their SIs, both left and right, but we've also put in a ZIP-51 in here. So they've got this particular patient has bilateral SI joint procedures. These have been staged out because you don't do them at the same time. And so, and then they come back because they're, you know, either this was first and this was second or any combination of such. Now, this particular patient has the most minimally invasive approach to their SI pain and to their lumbar fusion pain, all done by Aurora. Uh, this is a great doctor who we work with. who's uh, often on the podium with us talking about why he sees the advantages uh, of this procedure in his practice and how uh, he works well with Aurora and how we work well with him. Uh, and this is true across the board where we've been really, really thrilled with how um, this collaboration when we're talking to doctors and saying, hey, what do you think about um, this technology? Uh, this was a course that we did in Las Vegas. Same thing, full classroom, doctors talking about how this product can be put in both SIP, Silo, Silo TFX, and they're they're signing up all the time to join us to come to these courses. And uh, it really, really uh, is getting great results. So we have uh, double the sales of the ZIP 51. We have multi-center study with the ZIP where we're getting positive outcomes, uh, reportable and published reportable outcomes. Our Silo Allograph system is totally, totally pulled out of the ashes. The allograph market is now starting to really get uh, reborn again. And the silo TFX is shattering records at Aurora Spine. Right? And that's just our interventional 
uh, division, if you will. Um, uh, the interventional division is now doing over a million dollars a month in sales. So that was from concept where I went out and talked to the board and then went and talked to shareholders that I was going to create this new division inside uh, of Aurora. And we did it and we've done it and we continue to do it. And this is why it's so important that we continue to focus on these devices and continue to pay attention to the interventional market. And as I mentioned to you earlier when we talked, is that this year, Aurora was, in my opinion, the most relevant device company at the ASPN meeting in Miami, uh, Florida, which is the largest pain conference in the U.S., uh, led by Dr. Tendier and Dr. Dalwood and many others. Uh, we had a great podium talk with Dr. Jason Pope, Dr. Falowski, and Dr. Meta. They gave statistical data on the ZIP, on the silo, on the silo TFX, uh, not one seat was available. We had standing room. I put, I put some stuff out on social. I think you even commented on it. We had people there looking at it saying, yeah, how do I learn more? And these were some new faces there. And as I mentioned, you get a new crop of doctors every year. So, and this was a sellout conference, uh, meaning it was at capacity. They're going to outgrow the Fountain Blue in Miami. It was just wall to wall, um, uh, doctors along with, yeah. This is, this is one of the things that I think is, is, extremely important for shareholders to recognize right um you're building a brand and uh, you, i would say well we talked about it a couple of years ago when you went to that conference you were probably not you were like a fly on the wall right yeah absolutely just one of the just one of the vendors in the room that was it and now you're packing a full standing room where people want to know more, right? Right. This is, I mean, this is everything that you want to see. And then, and that's right. You are, you are creating new categories that didn't exist. And here's the reality of it. That's right. 13% of the population will be early adopters. You have to have 70 to 80% adoption to be the standard. Right, I try. That does not happen overnight because why? Because human beings don't like change. We are, we have a herd mentality, right? So it's really important for those early adopters to, if you can grow that number from you know thirteen percent to fifteen to twenty percent, then you start to get some influence, and that's when the herd starts to form, right? And that's how that's. That's when you get the hockey stick. Is when you right. get that real adoption. You are not right. try, you're not trying to be a flash in the pan. You are trying to build a brand that is best of class innovation, right? And, That's and right. A, a brand you can trust. And That's trust, right. I don't care who you are. You do not build trust in a month. No, a week. It, it, you know, nope. trust takes time to build, but you've been right. doing all of the things to build that trust. The cadaver labs, all the stuff. It, it takes time, but now you can see it. I know you can see it. Absolutely. Right? And and it will be reflected in the share price at some point. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because you will become the standard, I believe. Right. Well, for certainly as a medical device company, as an implant company in the interventional market, um, which outnumbers the ortho and neuro doctors six to one, um, you know, gives me way more shots on goal. And as a reminder to our shareholders and people who have followed the story for quite some time, um, when we were trying to uh, find ourselves, you know, in the, after the first five years of being a business, we had uh, a strict focus on ortho and neuro. This is when five years ago is when we made the pivotal decision to say, well, okay, we're not relevant enough in the ortho neuro market. Maybe we can try other markets and look what we've, you know, I don't think anyone would complain if I told them that, hey, I'm going to go into this other market and it's going to generate um, uh, a million dollars a month. 
right? And, and it has now, right? So this is this is where we are today. So five years ago to make the decision to go into the interventional space was going to do a couple of things. It was going to maybe alienate us a little bit against the ortho newer community, but we would keep working on that to make sure that we get the collaboration, everyone playing nice in the sandbox. And I think we've done a good job with that. But two is if we're going to do it, let's you know do what we say we're going to do, which, you know, that's my big, my big philosophy in, in the years that you and I've talked is that if I say I'm going to do it, we're going to do it. Sometimes timelines go a little bit longer than we want them to, but we're still going to execute on it and we're going to succeed on it. Um, and we're succeed, we have su- su- succeeded as an implant company in the interventional space. And we've got some more tricks up our sleeves in the interventional space because the doctors and the interventional side of it are asking us more and more, what else do you guys have in come in the pipeline? And we had a round table at that, uh, at that July meeting, uh, which we had a, a, an unbelievable month with sales with the company that month. We had an unbelievable turnout at the event. We had unbelievable announcements with the multi-center studies. We showed them some new things uh, that are really going to change uh, the game, and uh, we couldn't be happier with uh, with this new uh, uh, our new uh, facet project that's uh, that's in the budget. No more money needs to be raised; it's already part of the budgetary outcome of the company. Aurora is going to be launching a new facet system, which has an estimated value of three point eight billion. It's even bigger than SI Joint. It's even bigger than the Zip Market. Um, we are with the FDA right now. Uh, we believe that we'll have an approval sometime in October, end of October. And then we'll start to commercialize the product in the beginning of the year. And this is going to be something that's going to be uh, uh, really, really uh, major for the company. And we're talking about an implant that's, um, you know, this big. It's really tiny and it goes into the facet. It's got a cog of uh, less than $100. It's going to have an average selling price of over uh, $7,000 per case. So it's going to have really high returns on it, low COG. Uh, it's got a, an estimated valuation of $3.8 billion. Uh, and we couldn't be more excited about this as a company. And again, it was already part of the budget. So last year, we talked a lot about getting TFX up and rolling. The year before that, it was getting the, FT, the 510K approval for TFX. But we did it. We did it. We continue to grow in the TFX. Um, and, um, next year you're going to see a couple new bells and whistles. And one of the big bells and whistles you're going to hear about is Aero, A-E-R-O. Uh, the Aero device will be something that's going to be really exciting for us to be working on, uh, next year. And I'm only going to keep this image up for five seconds and take it off because it's that big of a project for us. Got it. So, all right. Um, which leads me, it leads me into, uh, that's what we've done with or- with the interventional market. Uh, I'll ask if you have some other questions because we t- started talking about DEXA yeah, and I want to get back to that. We had the code is- issues, right? Yep. I mean, you've had challenges that you've had to work through. That's why this hasn't just been a straight shot up, right? I mean, you got rolling and then you had some changes in the billing or the, the codes and, and yep. there was a, a question whether or not you were even going to be able to maintain and yep. that's all been you're done you're through that and uh you know dexa you are you're let's put it this way you have a method to your madness right you're being methodical as to how you are approaching the markets and you have a longer term plan of of where you want to get to and if that means you have to slow the roll on a few some things here now that's okay because it's it's going to pay off more in the future and that's really what i care about right 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 that's exactly right so you know the reason why the interventional market grew for us was yes of course we we made some really great products but additionally we brought in some really great people that help make those products sell products don't sell themselves i try to make them as slick as i possibly can so it gets the sales organization excited and management excited about it and that, that's my job. And obviously, they have to really roll up their sleeves and go out there and put in the hard yards all over the country, being away from their families on the weekends. They go sell something. And I think that that, that symbiotic relationship is, is we are our, our sales organization, the people who are with us uh, that are direct with Aurora, uh, and I also give a lot of credit to our independent distributors, but uh, they're, they're hard charging. You know they're they're excited about um, about the, the devices and it shows in our growth. It shows in the second half of this year's growth. Um, 
And this is why most recently uh, you saw in a press release that we added Ron uh, Eckel to the to the to Eckers to the company um, uh, because we we had we had to pivot our focus to create this interventional market, this interventional division that now does over a million dollars a month, uh, only to now because of certain things that were starting to come into place, which was the release of the Hydra system, which was our our lumbar system, our system that was going to be involved in big lumbar fusion, right? Lumbar screws. This is the 48 to 52% of all revenue in the world of spine hardware for the orthopedic and the neurosurgeons only. This gives us attention uh, back to talk to these uh, to these spine surgeons. And we've made a beautiful um, comprehensive system uh, that allows them to you think about us, just like we did with the interventional market. It started with, they tried the zip, they asked us what else we had. We showed them the silo. Then we said, hey, what else do you got? We showed them the silo TFX. Hey, what do you think about the Zip 51? These are four products that now interventional doctors use from us. And this is why I mentioned just a moment ago about what we're going to do in cervical, right? You know, how, sorry, what we're going to do in, in the facet market. So with lumbar, we're, because of the orthopedic doctors and neurosurgeons that we work with, they started asking us, well, why doesn't Aurora have its own lumbar screw? And this has been in our financials and our, in our, um, IR calls for a couple of years now. So again, I made a promise that we were going to get there. We were going to make uh, this system and we have, we've now rolled it out. It's in an alpha phase right now. Um, but then something really exciting happened. Uh, and, and I told you the story earlier, another uh, company that made unbelievably comprehensive uh, instruments uh, and implants um, wanted to join in with Aurora. Uh, they knew about Hydra coming out. They loved what we were doing in the interventional space. They loved what we were doing with DEXA. They wanted to learn more about DEXA. We wanted to learn more about, about them. Um, so we uh, have a private label agreement between the two companies. We've now brought their product into Aurora, which is going to be called Osteonix underneath the Hydra brand. And Osteonix is a, uh, a real, uh, uh, I think, game-changing approach to lumbar fusion. Um, and it gave Aurora uh, three new categories uh, in spine, all part of the lumbar fusion categories. But it gave us scoliosis and deformity, comprehensive. Where we already have our first scoli cases scheduled on the books at Aurora. And these are big procedures. These are like $40,000, $50,000 each case. I mean, these are big, big procedures. Two, it gave us a, a second uh, lumbar MIS system, so percutaneous uh, you know, small incision screws that go into the spine for MIS uh, surgery. We've already got our first cases booked with that new device, which is called Osteoonyx underneath the Hydra brand. Um, and we added Ron to the team because Ron's focus is purely spine. He's focused on spine. Spine leadership, spine KOLs, spine training, spine distributors. And we've already added now, I think, 17 new distributor contracts all within the last two and a half months. Uh, so these distributors are now going out, getting hospital approvals for us. Uh, the whole catalog is going in there. It's 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 Zip, it's Silo, it's Silo TFX, it's Hydra, it's Osteonix, and yes, it's going to be Dexa, right? Because Dexa is the big stage in this. Is if you have the screws and you have the Zip device and you have a way of fixating the lumbar spine, then it's a natural transition for us to get more exposure with the Dexa. Uh, product. We are in a multi-center study, which we're getting very positive outcomes with the uh, the uh, DEXA C cervical study. It's going fantastic. So Ron has already increased uh, the numbers. The numbers are coming up. We're seeing more uh, usage. Uh, one of the newest doctors that just joined us, all within within a month of joining us, has done almost twenty levels by himself. Right. So that's it. Took one doctor to create twenty le new levels of DEXA cases. Right. And he couldn't be happier. Like this doctor I talked to just the other day, he's an orthopedic surgeon. He's like, I, you know, I wasn't a big 3D printing guy. The fact that you guys created a density difference, that I could see my fusion through the implant. You've given me options I've never had before where I could pick a density that's going to fit my patients. You go in my population. I've got fat patients. I've got skinny patients. I've got patients that smoke. I've got patients that don't take care of themselves. So I'm the surgeon. I need options. You've given me those options. And it's the first time. So 
he's a huge believer. He's even asked us to be faculty now to teach. And I asked him how he felt about teaching interventional doctors. He says, let's do it. So again, playing nice in the sandbox, getting thought leaders. This is a young doctor. He's uh, like 40, I want to say. Like, you know, he's a young guy. He's going to be around for a long, long time, longer than us. And uh, he couldn't be more thrilled to be joining the team. Uh, he loves what we're doing with osteonics. He loves what we're doing with uh, with Dexa C. And, uh, you know, his films uh, look fantastic. You know, the cage is upside down, but it doesn't matter. It goes in any way you want. Here's your Dexa low density implant, right? So it practically looks like bone, right? It already does. You know, it gets gets the incorporation in there. And, uh, and here's a different uh, customer that we have here. This is high density. So it's, you see it's a little denser. Yeah. And you can see how this is you know, difference between high density and low density implants. So uh, people who are waiting for DEXA to pop, uh, I share that with you. You know, we we are, we're, we're pushing on it and we're adding all the right people to come into place. DEXA cervical sales are going to rise the second half of this year and we're going to be able to show it. You said something to me when, uh, before we hopped on, when you, when you brought Ron on. Ron obviously is um, very excited about it. He, he actually, in his own words, said that this reminded him of uh, another transition in, in the spine or in the industry, right? Would That's you right. Want, you want to share that? Yeah, he, so he, yeah, he, uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's two terrific spine companies out there, uh, and uh, one just actually acquired the other. So Globus Spine is a mega company. They're, you know, top, top four in the whole world in spine. Uh, they have a I think a $5 billion market cap. So maybe it's three, eight. I'm getting the numbers wrong, but that point is that they're, they're huge. They, they acquired the Nuvasiv, which had a, a you know, a, a billion plus market cap. And at one point in time, Nuvasiv was like in the top four. Um, and Nuvasiv is very good. They're just right down the street from us here. You can just drive there in a, in a few minutes. So he compared us to Nuvasiv. And I agree with that because Nuvasiv was very, very unique. Did some really good work. Um, uh, I've always been a fan of the people that got that company off the ground. It's broken up now. Uh, there's a lot of those, those leaders are different companies now. And so I know that they'll do great with those other companies. But with what Ron said is this reminds him of the new base of days where he worked at and that Aurora had focused on uh, unique boutique products that are going to get the door opened. And now they're FDA approved. Now they're, you know, they're studied data to share. There's all this work that's been going on behind the scenes. Uh, that he feels like he's, he's, it's like a layup for him now. He knows he has to put in some hard yards, but he knows that he's got shots on goal, that he's got a story to tell. He's got osteonics to talk about. He's got hydra to talk about. He's got dex to talk about. And let's not forget that Stylo TFX can be an orthopedic uh, company as well. So we're already targeting in on several key orthopedic uh, surgeons around the country with Ron's help and other new distributors that have been brought on to the company where we're actually going to add more orthopedic SI fusions uh, versus pain uh, SI fusions. It'll be something that would be more of a record number for us, adding to the robustness of how well the posterior approach is. It's a safer procedure. It's easier to perform than the complicated lateral procedures that are out there. And orthopedic guys get it. And it, and it, it reminds me what how Nuvasiv got started is they came out with a lateral procedure into the world of spine and it created all sorts of havoc in the market. People weren't sure how to code for it, weren't sure how to reimburse for it. It wasn't your traditional just either anterior going to the belly or posterior going just straight to the back. It was truly through the side lateral. And now that is a standard procedure that every single spine company performs now, and Nuvasiv created it. So for us, this posterior approach for SI is going to be really, really uh, uh, strong for the company. And of course, as you know, we've been we've we've talked about it a lot. You know, we we are making the DEXA into an entire platform. So our SI through our cervical and maybe even outsource a license to people who do total hips and knees, which we have no des desire to do, adding DEXA to all of our portfolio, making sure that DEXA is that leading uh, technology where doctors have choices, as I mentioned. Don't know, that don't know about the color coding thing, if maybe there's somebody that's new, maybe, maybe just kind of give a real quick. Yeah. Know, so it, it's simple. So number one, we own the DEXA word. DEXA is, a, is an acronym that had been around for many, many decades. Uh, and it's a global standard. Uh, and it's dual uh, absorption x-ray. 
you know, uh, 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 acronym. And it was owned and utilized by all the big companies like GE Imaging and others. Um, so the trademark got abandoned. So we now own the word DEXA. We apply it to what we make. The, there was uh, two uh, major indicators that one of them was a T-score. You see this numeric value system that's right here. This is a plus four to a minus four. And then there was a color-coded scale added to it that if you had a numeric value, what would be that color range, which would be normal bone to where you go from normal bone to where you have osteopenia, where you're starting to cross over into unhealthy bone right here. And then from osteopenia to that minus 2.5, call it right here, now you've crossed over into a, an area that is very, very difficult for surgeons to manage if the patient can hold in, uh, implants into their body because of the weakness of the bone, that osteopenia to that osteoporosis part. So we built implants that were biomechanically tested to be able to fit within that T-score and be able to fit within that, uh, that color coding. We actually got the color coding and the T-score and the name and everything involved in our patent. So we're the only ones that have this patent. And it applies to not just uh, orthopedic spine, it applies to dental implants, cranial, hips, knees, anything that interfaces with bone. And if you want to claim DEXA and you want to claim density and you want to claim numeric value and color coding, you got to go through us. It's our patent and we got it. And so we're we're you know excited about the multi study that we have a cervical. Yes, to all our shareholders, yes, I want to see more growth in the cervical and in the DEXA um, uh, revenues. It's coming. It's coming. This is part of what we've been working on. And these implants are performing exceptionally well. They have a cog of about 100 bucks a piece. Uh, we get an average selling price of you know well over $1,000, closer to $2,000. Prices are going to go in different areas. They're going to be 700 bucks here. They're going to be 2000 bucks over here, $3,000 over here. It's, it's scattered around the, around the country, but it really is. This is a real live picture of an implant that's just about to go into a human body. And there's allograft here, right? This is the DBM I talk about. And you can see here, it looks like a piece of bone. The whole frame looks like a, like a green piece of bone. And it's designed this way because it matches that patient's bone density. It's in the line. And doctors have never had a choice before. It wasn't something that they ever had. And um, people might say, well, you know, what, what does that really mean? Like, I don't understand how, you know, it, you know, how does it, how is it, how is it very well over the years, uh, you know, call it 20 plus years ago, they had just bone chips and then companies came around and started making machined bone where they actually manufactured this bone. And then they started machining metal implants and there was upsides to both of these approaches. And they started saying, well, what do we add polymers? Cause polymers can be manufactured and they're better modules. They're more flexible. We came into the market where we added tie coating along with polymers. And then all of a sudden, 3D printing blew up in our face. Everyone said they 3D print this and that. But was what was the problem with that is that 3D printing was just another version of being machine metal. It was either printed metal or machine metal, right? And that was, there was some categories here that were a problem. Like here in the bone, supply issues, no structure. This one had... You know, supply issues again, had disease transmission problems because it was human bone. Then it was machine metal. Now you started having implant fractures, started having problems with the, the bone, the material being too hard. This product was interesting, but it started finding out it was osteophobic. The, the way bone grows can't grow onto that implant. That's why we created the tie coating on top of the implant. So these are all the features and benefits that we've come along over the last 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, 3D printing, machining bone, all this kind of we created DEXA, and DEXA is that product where it now is, it, it allows all the features and benefits of what people wanted in bone, what they wanted in 3D printing, what they wanted in structure, and now it gives them a three-dimensional um, uh, uh, growth characters where the bone can grow in any which way through the implant, along with a category where the patient can actually, uh, the doctor interoperatively can say, what density does this uh, patient have, and pick it live in surgery and put it into and put it into your mother, your brother, your sister, your friend, all based upon the T score, all upon the color coding score, and most importantly, not just what's important about the, the scoring system. The scoring system is super important, but one of these things these doctors deal with is not necessarily that the real world is they walk into the room and all of a sudden they go, patient's going to be great. They put their little instruments in there and they're working on the neck and they look up and they go, 
This patient's got horrible bone. Now, what are you going to do? One size fits all. So Medtronic reps in a room, you're just going to put the most highest density implant in there? No. We're going to say switch to red, doctor. Pick the lowest density implant and use us. And this is what I mean by options. These options did not exist two years ago. Just two years ago, this option didn't exist. And two years ago, we started manufacturing DEXA. In a year and a half now, we've been selling DEXA. And in a year and a half, we've got a multi-center study. We've got a, we've got, we start to see the rise of sales the second half of this year. The story is building. We know that this implant does what we say it does. Here's a, here's a solution that we put in. It, it wicks on its own. The solution without moving the Petri dish or anything, the, sol- the, the blood, which I'm trying to replicate here, grows and just goes into all the nooks and crannies of the implant. And it goes, yeah, it goes all the way to the surface of the implant, all on its own. It wicks on its own. It's like a sponge, but it's made out of uh, the titanium. So we're giving the best possible outcome for the patient to be successful, giving the doctor a great reputation in, in his or her communities, getting the patient back on their feet, reducing their pain score, reducing their subsidence rates. This is a story that I have to keep building. And this is why I think shareholders should be excited about this because it's a story that must be continuously built upon. Right. And that's what's going to bring the adoption, right? That's right. So we've, we've got the multi-center study started with the cervical. We're close to, to releasing. We're hopefully by December. So we're shooting to get our first A-lift standalone. This is a standalone device. This costs us about $120 to make for the frame here. The screws uh, are like $19 a piece. So all in, you know, we're less than $200 on this average selling price, $6,800. So let's 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 highlight something that you you highlighted for me before we hopped on, which is the fact that initially you were either Aurora Spine was all about being a screw less company for the spine, right? Yep. And yep. This is, and and that's your focus is changing a little bit, but that is because of why. Well, the screw list is how we started the company, which would help. I think people take a closer look at what we're trying to accomplish. It didn't, it, it didn't get as the uh, quick adoption that I hoped that it would in the ortho and the neuro market, but you dust yourself off and you reset it. It gets, it has adoption uh, and a growing adoption in the interventional market. And so now the interventional doctors are now uh, opening up more surgery centers and more um, uh, uh, surgery centers around the country and, and more people are working with them, such as ortho neuro in those centers. So wh- why did we uh, why did we start to incorporate more screw fixation? Well, one of them is it's the right path for FDA approvals. It's a faster approval to get certain things like I showed here with uh, with these. This was a, a system that I had merged into Aurora, and now we dexified it. It was a three D printed. We we call it Solo. It's on our website. If you look up Solo. It's a three D printed implant. Our goal is. This is the gold standard for a lift standalone, this approach with the screw fixation um, going to your belly in the lumbar, but no one has a DEXA implant. So for us, the, the focus was, well, we could overthink the screw list for screws for fixation, or we could focus on the materials and how do we better treat the bone. So bone density matters, showing implants that can actually fit that patient's uh, implants that can fit that patient's bone. Screws are never going to go away, not least in my lifetime. Um, but if we can offer a better quality solution to what goes in between the bone, that's where our focus is going to continue to stay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, it, from We're just going to real quickly just talk about the uh, share structure. Right now you've got how many shares outstanding fully diluted? I've got Chad. He's our CFO. He's uh, on the call. So I'll have Chad chime in. That way we make sure we get it accurate for those. Yeah. I'll, um, right now, the total shares outstanding are 77,422,449. Uh, on top of which we have uh, 4.7 million in stock options and about 15. Point four million in warrants out there uh, of no go. What's yeah, the go strike ahead. on the warrants? The warrants are at fifty cents, I believe. Let me check. 
might even be higher than that, Chad. But yeah, so part of them are 61 and the other part are at 50. Okay. So uh, the ones at 61 cents um, are probably going to expire this month. Oh, this month? Okay. Yeah, effective um, six months to September 17th. Uh, about eight million nine hundred seventy-six thousand will expire. Okay, so that's that's interesting. Okay, so that's going to knock the, the warrant overhang down almost uh, less than half of the fifteen million, right? Right. More than half. More than half of the fifteen million. Okay, that's a good thing. Uh, it'd be a better thing if if you know this thing rocketed up to like a buck. 50. <laughs> that would be a better thing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's right. Right. And then you, but, you get some cash in from the warrants. I, I, that would be fantastic. I, I, well, I, you know, we talked a little bit earlier and, you know, it, it looked, I, I, I knew, we knew that if we closed out the year strong last year and we did, um, uh, there were still things that were in, in the works and we knew if we hit it right in the beginning of the year, which we, I, you know, doing, we did over 4 million in Q1 of last year, or sorry, this year. And then we were only a little bit up in Q2. So we did uh, 4.01 in Q1, we did 4.07 in Q2. But uh, we thought that we could move what we're doing now in Q3 into Q2. We thought it would just be that much sooner. But as we talked about earlier, I was off by 90 days, okay? So the things that we're doing now in, in Q3 is where we wanted to be in Q2. Let's just adjust our focus into that. It was still execution that was that was taking place for all the right reasons in, in a good way. And adding the things that we've talked about where we've added more distribution, we've added key player, we have a focus now back onto our spine. We put a lot of focus on the pain, pain's doing great. Putting more focus now back onto the spine and not taking our eye off the pain. Now we're gonna run into, we'll have two categories. So now, is it highly likely and, 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 and even boldly to be saying on my side that we could do a uh, million dollars a piece in both divisions per month? The answer to that question is absolutely yes. We can absolutely be an over $20 million a year company. And it's the second half of this year that's going to show everyone that that's what's going to happen in 2025. Right. I mean, I think the other thing to uh, to recognize, you're building a brand. You have a, a, a direct sales force, which you were dependent upon third parties, uh, you brought in some incredible talent, right? I mean, all of these yep. things, these t they, they take time to materialize, but but the benefits of each one of those things that you've done, these are long lasting, these are long lasting and, and um, transformational events is what right. I, I guess I would say, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of lakes to everything we're talking about here. Nothing is flash in the pan type stuff. It's actually, we think it's well thought out. We think it's well executed upon. It takes a little bit longer for it to grow sometimes, but we we know we're in the right place and we have, we're unique. We're, we're, in, we're in multiple aspects of spine. You know, we're in the, the pain people who just do injections, but also now start to do procedures. We're in the, the orthopedic spine doctor that now says, wow, Aurora's really made some super minimally invasive products that I got to take a closer look at. And then equally, that ortho and neuro doctor is now looking at Aurora saying, yeah, they're making this minimally invasive product, but now they're actually showing the material, how they've changed bone structure and the material, how they've added uh, the possibilities of treating my patients beyond just a widget. It's actually something that now is going to incorporate into the patient's body, uh, and they see it. I mean, they, they, they tell me why they see it. They sell me on why DEXA is the right device. And we're also going to, you're going to hear about it next year and you can mark it down. Osteonics and the Hydra part of DEXA story is going to blossom uh, second half of this year and it's going to be blossoming all next year. It's going to be something that we're going to be talking about in the website. Soon we'll be updated with all the new Osteonic stuff and people are not going to understand where all this new product came because it wasn't part of any uh, CapEx. It fell into our lap. We've organized it. It's now super exciting what we're doing on it. And we've been putting out some uh, tidbits of information in social media so people know that it's out there. It's now the public should take a deeper look at it. And more importantly, this shows like this, it's important for them to actually understand what these products are and how they're going to be part of the bigger play for Aurora and why Aurora we will be well beyond $20 million next year. And that'll be the crossover for us, right? 
You're an ankle biter at five and 10 and maybe 15 million, but past $20 million, we're now a real pain in people's sides, right? We're going to be a true thorn. Yeah. No, that's an ankle biter. I love that. Uh, no, there's, there's no doubt. It, let me ask you this, Trent. You ever not thinking about how to improve the company? No, no. We, I, I live and breathe it seven days a week, and I, I, I'm more excited today than I've ever been. I continue to be excited, and not just me. If, if you were, just, if anyone were just to randomly call and speak to, uh, say, Matt Goldstone or talk to Ron Eckers or uh, you know Caitlin Sims and other that are in our organization, they would echo everything I just said. And your board, your board of directors. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, the board has been been super supportive about everything that we've done, and they've been uh, you know real champions uh, for us. Um, you know, from a board standpoint, because we haven't made any changes, we haven't uh, you know moved anyone in and out of the company. Uh, it's been you know stick to the plan, keep your head down, stay focused on it, and we're going to be one of the very few companies, um, very few companies out there that actually will be that profitable. Uh, spine company that's in the marketplace. Right. I mean, that's, it, so it's taken a little bit longer than, than you were, like you said, you're off by 90 days. Can't say exactly what, what the numbers are, but, you know, I would say probably pay attention to this next quarter's numbers, right? Absolutely. Uh, and that's what this is really all about is, is right now you've got a stock and, and, and I, for everything that has been accomplished by this company and look it's i will also say it's not just this company it, it is the market for small caps and micro caps itself you look at what companies have done they've, they've managed through a uh, pandemic they managed through the worst supply chain issues in the history of mankind managed through the fastest interest rate hike cycle in the history of mankind and they're still here and they're not just here, they're growing. That's, they're growing, they're building a brand and uh, valuations on companies right now, I think are beyond stupidity. That, that's but just like we get uh, you, you too euphoric when you know the markets are ripping, we get too pessimistic when the, the markets are tanking, right? So absolutely, I think this is an amazing, opportunity at these levels but i am not telling anybody what to buy or to buy it because that's not what i do <laughs> that that is entirely up to to you or your investment advisor but if you are not following the aurora spine story i would suggest that this would be a fantastic time to go to their website sign up for their email alerts and start paying attention to what this company is doing because they are they are building an amazing brand and um, it will reflect at some point in the share price. I, I can't tell you when <laughs> I, my crystal ball never seems to work correctly, but I, I, I can tell you that it's coming. I, I, I truly believe it's coming. I don't know when, but it's coming. And uh, Trent, I think you've done it. I think you and your team have done a, a excellent job. I think you do an excellent job just sharing the graphics. That, I mean, take a look at the how everything is like almost perfect, right? I mean, you put your a lot of time and effort into doing a, a, a really easy to understand presentation. I mean, I have no knocks on you, man, at all. Right? Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. You just, it, it, you can't control the market. You can't control what people see or, or think, or, but you, you're not going to raise capital. Let's make that clear, right? No, no, no need to. Right. And that's no, what it's one of the things right. I'm worried about. In this, in right. this climate, it's like, oh, you're going to do a, you know, you're going to do a capital raise when you're sitting at your all time low almost. And you're going to do 200% warrant coverage, and you're just going to screw the shareholders. That's not going to happen here. No, nope. right? Not at all. Not at all. We're not. We're not talking about raising money. It's not even a conversation that we're having. In fact, Chad and his team and the finance. One of the, one of the big criticisms that we had, and it was a fair criticism, so I'll, I'll respect that, is that we were having a tough time collecting the money, and it had a lot to do with 
coming out of COVID and I'm not going to use COVID as an excuse, but these were the things that were happening. And Chad and his team uh, really got after it. Uh, in particular, we, had, we added a new AR collections person inside the company and that guy has brought tons of money back into the company. We're now really, really, we've not, not only have we, it's not a dent, we've taken chunks out of the AR and brought it back into Aurora, which is how we fund our operation, how we fund our company, how we run it every day. So there's no conversation of raising money. We're making money on our products. We've, we've maintained our budget this year exactly the way we wanted it. Um, and you know, if, if we're at five bucks a share, two bucks a share, whatever the magic number is, and we, we look at, uh, we think there's market opportunity for us to, to bring in money, we'll have those conversations then, but that's not a conversation we're having today. And, and we won't be having that conversation, uh, I'm sure into next year. It's more just keeping our heads down and selling more of what we have versus worrying about what we don't have. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, you feel as though I missed anything here that no, I think, uh, again, uh, people, we're going to be updating the website. So I asked everyone to keep updates on that. Um, you know, at 19, 20 cents a share, uh, go to your couch, go to your ashtray. You can buy some shares. I'm sure you're going to have change in, the, in those locations. Uh, it's never been a better time to buy a Roar stock. I, I, it's not a 20 cent a share company. Uh, I can't, you know, I know my, I know talk is cheap, but, but as you said, everything I showed you today, is real and like i said there's some intangible things that are, are a little bit behind the scenes but i've said what they are it's the oceanics it's the arrow these are things that are all part of the budget it's the dexa platform expanding these are these are ways that aurora makes more money and makes uh, aurora profitable and takes away that that fear in the in in the um shareholders that oh they're going to go raise more money so the second half of this year is going to be a, a, a better indication of where aurora should be and I'm not giving guidance, but uh, I know that we're going to be beyond $20 million next year. And we'll be able to show that this year on how we're going to grow, how we have that platform to be past $20 million next year. So I'm, I want to, I want to, I want to focus. I want to end this with a, with a comment to the shareholders. If you're a shareholder and, and you're frustrated with the story, I would ask you, what is it that you do to help? Aurora Spine uh, build their brand, right? People can do a heck of a lot more than just buy shares and then, you know, pound on management to execute and perform. Uh, that really doesn't get anything accomplished. <laughs> I guarantee you Trent is doing everything in his power to get – Trent, are you are you a pretty sizable shareholder in in Aurora? Absolutely, I continue to buy shares. So yes, I I, I have a uh, account where I actually buy shares on the OTCs myself, and and um, I'm buying more shares even as we speak. So. so, I I would say you have you know you're putting your money where your mouth is, and no one would be happier if if the stock were to appreciate, right? That's absolutely that's the goal. Yeah, that is the goal. Having a having an interview with somebody and bashing or, or and and pounding them about a missed quarter. Or, I mean, all that stuff's in the past. I don't care about any of that. I mean, it's I care about where we're going, right? That's right. Pounding somebody right. or or trying to make it just makes no sense to me. I invest with people I like that I respect. <laughs> that yeah, I, thank if, you. If I don't like them and I don't respect them, why would I be investing with them? If I'm, it just doesn't make sense to me, right? Right. I'm going to talk to you. Everybody says uh, my my interviews are too soft. Well, that, you can have that opinion. I, I'm going to talk to somebody like a friend, not like uh, I'm an, against them, right? I mean, I I know in your heart of hearts, you want the same thing I want. Right. There's no absolutely and, like that. <laughs> and I think it, for us, I think it's important that we talk about the technologies. I know numbers are the scoreboard, so the numbers have to come. And I get that. But also, you should know where the numbers are going to come from, because if you don't know, if we just have some top line revenue number and you don't know the story, how, how it all got here and what products are doing what and what's doing how and how we're going to continue to to grow in that way, then you're missing the full story. And. You can overanalyze a lot of things uh, at Aurora, and some things you can analyze and be spot on. But the one thing that is for sure is that the focus of the company has been true, the board has been true, and where we're going as a company is up. 
there you go. That is it. I mean, it, it, as shareholders, uh, 13% adoption. I'll help them get from 13% to, to 20%, right? That's how That's you right. do it. Spread the word about the company. Uh, what is the differentiator about the company and their products? I mean, these are game-changing things. The color coding, all of that, the, the, you know, for the the bone density. These are the things. That's that's what you talk about. That's what you do. You help shine a light on Aurora Spine because you believe in what they're doing and you believe in their products, right? And maybe everybody else doesn't know about this little company. That's, that's right. the issue, right? They need more eyeballs to find them. And that's what shareholders can do, right? So I would just say, instead of constantly, you know, harping on things that are already passed, think about where they're going and be part of the solution. That That's what I would suggest. So, um, and I'm not trying to bash anybody. I'm just saying, take a look at yourself and how can you, can you help more? And if you can help, I mean, you're part owner of the company. That's how I look at it, right? You, that's right. Yeah. You own part of we, the company. That's so right. That's why we, we want it. We, we, we welcome you and we, we want it. The story is going to, is going to expand by, um, by our shareholders. You know, we, we, we really respect all of them and how even the comments that are hard to, to, to sometimes answer because maybe it's not the answer they are looking for or I'm not answering it the right way. It's not that we, we have nothing to hide here. This is a black and white story. Uh, we're we're super genuine about everything that we're doing, um, and we've got all these doctors and surgeons, and everyone is also believing in the company, just like the shareholders are. Uh, you know, you're believing in us, and 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 you're believing in these surgeons and doctors that are behind me, and ultimately, these surgeons and doctors are believing in Aurora because they're putting our implants in their patients, right? And the, some of the, many of those patients have nothing to do with the share. The shares in the company, the stock in the company, uh, but we look at it as a Aurora. Is we care thoughtfully about the about the industry that we're in. We care and are thoughtful about the shareholders, uh, stakeholders in the company, and we're trying to make the best possible implant so we can get the best return for all of our shareholders. And you guys can count on us. You know, I live and breathe this thing seven days a week, and this is a, a real exciting time for the company. It truly is. Certainly, you are passionate about making quality of life better for the patient yeah yeah right i've got i've got i've got friends family members all ask me all the time i get phone calls about hey what can i do here to help myself out there and and uh, we've done surgery on family members here that we know multi-level surgeries on family members and staff members and you know we're we're in this to win it right we're in it to win it and uh and, uh, you know, each time we've done something, it's it's added something to Aurora. So I echo what you just said, Tim, is if, if some shareholders can also jump in, be a shareholder, and then help uh, spread the word, that'll help it snowball it and get us growing and becoming bigger and better as a company and uh, more impact on the, on the shares and more impact on the people who own the shares. It's a win-win for everybody, right? It's a win-win for everyone. The patients, the doctors, the shareholders. Uh, all the staff members, it's a, it's a real opportunity and, you know, exciting times ahead. I love it. All right, Trent, thank you so much for taking the time to do the, to do this. And I hope uh, everybody is excited as I am that, uh, you know, this is, this is, a, this to me is a, is a steal of a deal right here. This is a gift, right? Um, thank you. I'm not, I, I would say if you're not in it, like he said, scrape together some change from your account. Right, Brian, you're easy to get in, right? <laughs> it's easy to get in. Yeah. Yeah. I think in a couple of years, you, you you know, just don't even look at it. Throw it in a drawer. A couple of years, you're going to be really, really happy with what what that change turned into. So, all right, Trent. Uh, Thank you, Tim. Let, when can we do a, a follow up? When do you think we should do a follow up? Uh, we could, uh, you know, why don't we do something in December and, uh, you know, we'll do a close out to the year and then we'll do another mid year next year, you know, and, and keep people excited uh, along the way. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a shorter one. We don't have to do it. We could just do like a quick 30 minute up view recap of 2024 and, and, uh, what we're looking at in 2025. Let's just plan on doing that. We'll get on the schedule this week. If, uh, or between this week and next week, we'll get a December date schedule. Okay. Perfect. All right, man. I'm going to shut this Thanks, off. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on a second.
Thank you for tuning in to another CEO interview here at Alpha Wolf Capital. Today we had Trent Northcutt from Aurora Spine, ticker symbol ASAPF. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. And if you did, do us a favor, give us a like. How about giving us a share? And while you're at it, make sure you smash that subscribe button. All of those things are tremendously important to us here at Alpha Wolf Capital, and we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Until next time, stay safe. Alpha Wolf Capital wishes you the very best of success.